It's good to have y'all here with us this morning. Um, so this isn't what our Paschal candle usually looks like unless you are part of the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd program, in which case this is exactly what the Paschal candle looks like. So I am thankful to them for lending us um, their Paschal candle because we have a hurricane glass that will fit over this one. And so we will get to appreciate that all Easter season long. Thank you for being part of this return to in-person worship. The beach was a little chilly this morning, <laughs> um, but joyful nonetheless. And this will be too. So let us take a moment of quiet as we prepare for worship and we celebrate this glorious day.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is with me. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines. <clears throat> of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Join me in a reading of verses from Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. A 
a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread through Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Jesus Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth. He was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Today we hear once again the familiar story of the empty tomb. This one was told in Mark's Gospel, much is consistent between this telling and others. We see women who are going 
to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body. They arrive, and the stone has already been removed from the entrance. And then there is a young man dressed in white saying, Do not be afraid. Sharing that this Jesus who had been crucified has been raised and pointing to the place where his body had been laid. And then he instructs the women, go tell Jesus' disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. But what happens next is unique to Mark's gospel. What's more, the next verse is the very last verse in the original version of Mark's Gospel. The final verse of the telling by Mark of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, promised in verse 1, ends with this last verse after being instructed to go tell the disciples we learn that they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Now a fifth century version of Mark's gospel will find a dozen additional verses that help fill out the story a bit, but this first version, the original version, ends by telling us that they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Now it's possible that this was an intentional ending as Mark was trying to spread the message of Jesus Christ And perhaps he was using this ending to illustrate why this message of a resurrected Messiah hadn't gained traction up to that point. This crucified Jesus had been raised from the dead. Why don't more people know about it? Well, perhaps it's because they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. In some ways, it's consistent with other passages in Mark's gospel when Jesus tells them, don't tell anybody who I am. But nearer the end of Mark's gospel, he always concludes that statement with, until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. And even then, they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Fear can be a pretty strong motivator. There have been many times in my life where it's been a strong motivator, sometimes a motivator for action, and sometimes a motivator for inaction. Trying to explain this story of Jesus would have been somewhat complicated for those first followers. Not just the obvious challenge of trying to convince others that someone has been raised from the dead. But first, they'd have to explain the crucifixion itself. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians alludes to this when he says, we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Greeks. Jesus' crucifixion would have been a stumbling block to the Jews because there's this one statement in Deuteronomy that says, anyone hung on a tree is under God's curse. And so they wouldn't have been able to reconcile a Messiah and also one who was hung on the tree. And the crucifixion would have been foolishness for the Greeks because for them, the way that someone dies is the final verdict on how they live. And since crucifixion was such a shameful death, it cast an unequivocal shadow on one's whole life, one's whole character. 
So while the resurrection certainly would have been difficult to explain, for those early followers of Jesus, the crucifixion proved just as challenging or even more so. The insurmountable shame associated with it perhaps is what caused those first to discover the empty tomb to say nothing to anyone because they were afraid. And before we judge them too harshly, I contend that current day followers of Jesus, sometimes we follow that same pattern of saying nothing to anyone about our journey as Christians. Perhaps we don't do that because there's an element of fear, no longer the stigma of the cross, but a reticence nonetheless. We each have our own reasons. Perhaps we don't know how to articulate what it is about being a follower of Jesus keeps us here. But it also brings questions like those early followers of Jesus would have had to face about the cross. Some of the questions we might be faced with in our current time is a reflection of the centuries worth, and even today, of Christians using brief passages to shame and reject others or our Christian history that is fraught with scripture being used to justify horrific acts of violence or the dehumanization of people or the perpetuation of hate against non-Christians. Somewhere along the way, Christians have lost sight from time to time of the heart of what Jesus' purpose in teaching was which is the opposite of those things. Jesus came into the world to embrace the outcast. Jesus came into the world to show compassion for those on the margins. Jesus came into the world to confront the systems and structures that oppress people. Jesus came into the world to show that the power of love is more important and stronger than any religious rules. Mostly, Jesus came into the world to open God's love to every single person. We hear this. We hear that Peter has grasped this in the words we heard from the Acts of the Apostles. It says, Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. So Peter was already opening up the boundaries and said, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to God. Doing right is about living authentically living into the person that God made each of us to be. It's about seeking God's guidance when we're faced with challenging decisions. And it's about respecting the dignity of every human being. I would say respecting the dignity of every being. In Peter's words, there was no requirement to be a follower of Jesus. Yet his testimony shares his experience of being with Jesus. This experience then compelled him, not just him, but him and the other disciples, to choose to follow Jesus. And not only to follow Jesus, to actually tell other people why they follow Jesus. So just as Jesus flipped the script on the shame of the cross, and just as Peter and later Paul flipped the script on proclaiming Christ to the Gentiles, we are invited to flip the script on Christianity's 21st century image, 
sharing our experience as followers of Jesus and making God's love available to all people just as God made them. That's the resurrection proclamation. It's what it was then, it's what it is now, and it's what it needs to be for all time. Do not be afraid to share that proclamation with others. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Through the Paschal Mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observation is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and all his works and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit do you believe in God the Holy Spirit Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and the prayers? I will, God. will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, God. will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, God. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I know God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I know God's help. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son, Jesus Christ, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. I'm going to ask somebody, Sean, where is Sean? Can you come help me? Now it comes next. Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please exchange the sign of the peace as safely as possible.
see a couple of rounds here. <laughs> and the Vulcan piece. <laughs> Seated. Again, thank you for coming and being with us. Um, for those who have not been with us in for in-person worship, or it has been several months, so um, if you'd like to receive Holy Communion, we will be providing it in the form of bread only. Um, communion is complete with just one element, so. And instead of having y'all come forward, we will bring it out to you. So if you would like to receive, you may just place one hand on top of the other when the bread bearer comes by and they will place it in your hand. We are also offering this worship online. We're video recording it so that those who aren't comfortable yet coming and worshiping in person can get it later in the day. So Frank has kindly been moving the camera because I know that just looking at me in the altar isn't what people at Church of the Servant want to see. They want to see y'all, and y'all want to see each other. So we'll find ways to make that happen. So let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. 
and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. All are welcome to receive communion.
Before we say the post-communion prayer, I would like to invite us to, we can clap still in COVID time and the choir has provided that wonderful anthem that we heard during communion virtually. They have been working hard to embrace technology and find ways to give us the music that we miss. So let us thank our choir and Matt and Phil Jorgensen for making that happen. There are many people who have helped to make outdoor worship happen. Um, Phil and Frank have continued to be helping with the sound system and technology and I am immensely grateful. The vestry and other people who have signed up, the readers. So thank you all and we will continue to get together on Sundays at 10 a.m. Shameless plug. <laughs> now let us stand and say the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. been dismissed. <laughs>